Hello everyone, welcome back to my channel and to Ella and Alex story. We're heading over to Agatha now to see what she's up to. I stand before Cinder Mercantile, the place where I grew up. It used to be a brightly painted storefront that showed off the coolest knickknacks in the city. Now, it's nothing but bordered up windows and faded graffiti. What a mess. A few weeks ago, I visited Fairy, discovered my heritage as an elf. Ever since then, I've been living in Cinder Mercantile and looking for paperwork, with my mother and sister gone. Who actually owns this place? Me? Ella? Someone else? I'm on a mission to discover the truth. Today, I finally found the records room. I could check through everything right away, but the place is dark and filled with cockroaches. At least, that's my story and I'm sticking to it. So instead of going through old papers, I'm off on a walk to get some copy. Stepping away from the ruined storefront, I turn down the deserted street. That's when I feel it. Someone is watching me. Chances are it's Jacobi. He's an elf prince, my personal nemesis. Also, his regular attempts at conversation are the highlight of my day. I know, complicated. One thing is for certain, I do not care how I look for someone like Jacobo. It's simply a coincidence that I check my reflection in a nearby store window. Normally, I'm a stooped figure in a boxy dress with dark hair and a floppy hat. I'm still working the dress and hat thing, only my hair is seriously different. These days... Red tresses pop out from under the brim. After I've found out my true heritage as an elf, my appearance changed slightly. Anyway, I definitely look presentable. Jack Bay, is that you? I try hard to make my voice sound irritated, but I don't do a great job. It's lonely sitting in Cinder Mercantile, constantly surrounded by dust bunnies and bad memories. If Jacoby didn't invite himself along to my nightly coffee runs, oh, I wouldn't have any human interaction. Sure, all I do is tell him to leave me alone, but it's still the highlight of my day. Did I mention our non-relationship is complicated? It is. But sure enough, Jacoby steps out from a nearby alley. He's unnaturally handsome with his broad shoulders, aristocratic cheekbones and cute swoop of black hair. Guess that goes along with being elf royalty. You always look camera ready. The prince leans against the building's facade and kicks his right ankle across his left. You really need to stop following me. It's rather embarrassing. I'm following you. I try to look offended. Again, I'm not sure I do such a great job. It's all right. Jacoby gives me a dazzling kind of smile. Only elves can pull off. I forgive you. You could even buy me a coffee. I'm not talking to you or buying you coffee. I tap my chest. This is me, living my own life. I get that you're an old prince and all your older brothers have been murdered. Not all, says Jacoby smoothly. Only most. And that's how things go in elf court. You'll find out for yourself soon enough. As the last moonbeam elf, your de facto royalty... Hail to the Queen. See? I throw my hands up. That's what I'm talking about. I want nothing to do with royal life. I'll stay right here in my old home and build up my future as a regular human. I lift my chin. This is who I am now. Rattling noises echoes up the street. I spin again, looking for the source of the sound. It's coming from home. I race back to find that all hell is breaking loose at Cinder Mercantile. The entire front wall of the store... Shimmies with power, light shines out from behind the planks, which keep the door in place. Thin beams cut through the breaks in the wood to cast odd shadows around me. Suddenly, the door collapses on itself, revealing a space that's filled with brightness. I'm too stunned to say anything but stare into the light. The world seems to flip. Gravity no longer drags me toward the sidewalk. Instead, I'm pulled into the open door, and it's flickering beams. It all happens so fast. I don't even have the chance to scream. 
Jacobe. One second. Agatha is here. The next. She's gone. That's a magical transport spell, pure and simple. But who cast it? Raise my arms. I pull on the power inside me. My elf energy solidifies into an orb of light that hovers between my outstretched palms. Show me Agatha, I whisper. Inside the sphere, I see Agatha standing inside a colourful temple. Columns line the walls. A checkerboard-style pattern covers the floor. A woman stands before a golden bowl. I know this place. Agatha's been pulled into fairy, and she's visiting none other than Eon, one of the essentials who created the Fae. Agatha stands at the centre of the temple floor, her face pale with surprise. Meanwhile, Eon drags her fingertips across the surface of the water bowl. The situation doesn't appear dangerous, yet... The essentials are four powerful ladies that create a fairy out of nothing. Each has her own speciality in terms of magic. <clears throat> For Eon, it's time. She picks a certain outcome that she wants to happen, and then Eon tries to control the cascade of events that lead to it. For now, Eon seems calm. My bet is that she won't hurt Agatha inside the temple. Unfortunately, Yon is known for handing out rather dangerous quests. So trouble is coming to Agatha, one way or another. A burst of protective energy runs through me. Agatha just found out she's the last of the Moonbeam Elves. That's not an easy adjust adjustment. Ever since she returned to New York, Agatha has been hiding inside Zinna Mercantile. And now, Eon wants to task her with a quest. Unacceptable. I force in a series of slow breaths. Stay calm, Jacoby. Agatha is a capable woman. I must wait for her to return and find out what Eon wants. Because when it comes to the essentials, it's always something big. And that's the next part. Well, <clears throat> interesting. <laughs> Thank you for listening and many blessings.